Hello guys, and welcome to my building tutorial. This one's about a Norman keep. And the Normans were the first great conquesters of, of medieval Europe. And they built these sort of keeps all around northwest Europe. And um, so they're pretty iconic. They're nice because they're defensible, but they're also slightly comfortable compared to earlier versions anyway. So let's get started on the tutorial. First off, we're going to make a little 3x3 tower, but with the corners sawn off. You can kind of see the arrangement here, but just in case, let me build it for you. Then, we're going to repeat this pattern in all four corners, and link them up with stone brick walls. Next up, we're going to build a tower to a total height of four, so basically place three blocks on. And place them in this fashion. That way you get a nice outline of stone bricks with windows and stuff that will later fill in with different materials. Basically all the corners, as well as the sides of the walls. The walls we're then going to fill in with cobble, like so. We're going to do the same thing in the tower. Basically build them up three high on the inside and then only two high on the outside. We're going to place some steps here later on for windows. On the inside, basically where I place this, we're going to place four more pillars, one in each corner. And these are going to be three high and then they're capped off with some upside down stone brick stairs. So basically just build these and place one in each corner. Next up we're going to cover the entire interior with some stone bricks and then we're going to orientate ourselves. So this is the front where the entrance is going to go. Then over here we've got on the left is going to be basically the toilets. The back and right are pretty much going to be the same so we don't need to worry about those. Next we're going to cover up each tower with uh, some wooden planks as shown. I'm using spruce but it's up to you. So we're going to do that for three towers but not the stair tower which is the one next to the door. So between the front and left walls. I've just placed a door down so you can kind of see where each thing is going. We're also going to start placing windows. And this is going to be pretty simple. Basically just place some little cobblestone stairs wherever you want a window to be. In the stair tower we're going to start by placing a central pine post. You can make this out of stone if you like, but for the moment I'm going with wood. Start off in this corner and work your way up gradually with half slabs. Next up we're going to start placing the toilets. These are on the left side of the castle. Then we're going to raise the castle up by one floor, so that's going to be four blocks total. And it's worth learning off this kind of, I suppose, pattern because you can basically make your castle as tall or as short as you want if you have this pattern down. So go along the perimeter and wherever you see a stone brick, raise it up by four. And we're going to do this all the way along, outside the towers as well as in the walls. Then wherever you want to place a window, it's a pretty simple formula. Just place in two fence posts, followed by a cobblestone, and then a cobblestone stair. And you can repeat this wherever you want to have a window. So you can kind of see the pattern I'm doing with the little cobblestone stairs. And the idea is that each time we place a cobblestone stair, that's going to be a window. So we follow this pattern of placing two fences on top, followed by a cobble piece, then a cobblestone stair. We do this pretty much all the way around, except for the door, which of course, you know, is a door, not a window. Um, but we're also going to follow the same pattern of putting a cobblestone stair on top so that we know where we want windows to go on the upper floor. For the toilets, this is where it gets a little finicky, I suppose. These two stairs are going to be where the outlet is. So basically we're going to have two chutes within the wall, which is called a garderobe or latrine, depending on who you ask. For the inside of these, what we're going to do is outline this kind of big block in stone bricks and then fill in the rest with cobble. Basically we want to have a clear kind of chute going straight down from the upper floors. Um, so yeah, basically we're just going to fill in the rest of this bulk with cobble. But, you know, bearing in mind to leave two little holes. And there you have it, two toilets. Now for the front door what we're going to do is have a sort of little, I suppose kind of like a, a trap door type situation. It's going to be a very precarious step and then um, basically they're going to have to cross a very narrow bridge to get inside. This may seem a little counterintuitive but the reality is castles are built to be defended. The more precarious and the more dangerous your entrance is the better. So next up what we're going to do is place some planks all along the, uh, the upper level and these are basically going to cover the entire structure except for the spiral staircase. 
for the spiral staircase, we're going to extend it. And this is basically just going to be the same pattern as before with our half slabs spiraling upwards. Next up, we're going to start building the walls up again. This is very similar to the last floor in that we build everything up by four. I'm also going to start by placing in windows so that I know where they're going to go. We're going to do the same thing for the towers. Now for the toilets, this is where it gets interesting because we're going to have, well, uh, as close to a functional toilet as you can get in Minecraft. Basically we're going to start by placing down these steps in this fashion, and then we're going to fill up the walls, as well as leaving room for a little window to look out, whilst you're having a thoughtful rest. So basically the rest of this is going to be filled up with cobble, like so, and we're also going to leave a chute for the next one. Don't forget a trapdoor to stop people from falling down. We're also going to start placing the next floor. This is going to be quite a tall castle. So basically fill it up as we've done before, but leave enough room for a spiral staircase. So this upper floor is going to be the solar, which is the kind of Lord's private residence. So we want to give them some nice open windows. They're a bit high up to be penetrated by any sort of, you know, arrows or projectiles. So you should be pretty safe with some nice big glass windows. We're going to build up the wall by four and pretty much follow the same pattern. Now for the actual walls, what we're going to do is build them up by four, but instead of having a window on top, because this is the top level, we're just going to round it off with stone bricks. The window is going to be two by three and we're going to use glass panes for this. We're going to do the same thing on the back and side walls. For the front, which is going to need to be more defensible, that's where we're going to have the, uh, I suppose, pretty much the same pattern as we had before. So two small arrow loops. For the toilet, we're going to follow a similar pattern to before, which is basically going to be a small window and pretty much surrounded by stone bricks and cobble. On this side, we're also going to sort of cap off the top of it with stone bricks. But what we want to do is give this little toilet a, a nice little secluded area. Again, another trapdoor. You don't want to fall down one of those things. So here we're going to place just a normal arrow loop. And again, cap it all off with stone bricks. Next up, we're going to place a 3x3 three three square in each of the towers, and this is going to be along the side of the original floor plan. We're going to do this for every tower except for the spiral staircase one, and then what we're going to do is basically round these off with stone bricks, um, so that we get a nice kind of even square around them. And we're going to do this to the spiral staircase tower even though it doesn't have planks. So you get the idea. Next up, we're going to link all these stone bricks together. So it's basically just going to be a two wide path, but going around each edge until it all meets up to give a nice sort of square effect. In this hollow, we're going to place some beams. Uh, I'm using spruce logs for this, but again, up to you. Then what we're going to do is build up some, I suppose, some sort of a roof structure. So for this, I'm using gray wool to kind of simulate wattle and daub, but your choice of materials. I just like the contrast that it gives. We're also going to cover this over with a nice roof. Um, and yeah, then it's basically on to building more towers. We're going to build these up by four again. So pretty much the same pattern as we've used before. However, on the inside, what we're going to do is cap them off and um, basically allow a little bit of a passageway around. For the battlements, we're just going to place some ordinary stone bricks and then place some upside down stone brick stairs all the way across as this gives kind of a, a nice overhang effect. Then we're going to arch it all off with some more upside down stone brick stairs. For the merlons themselves, what we're going to do is basically just place some stone brick stairs and kind of form this sort of gradual jagged pattern. Then we're going to come over to the spiral staircase tower, build it up by three more blocks, 
and then we're gonna level off this platform because basically we're gonna want to place a ladder in there later for each of the towers we're gonna basically fill them up but leave one small gap and place a ladder in each of them and these can be whatever orientation you like but for the spiral staircase tower it has to be a certain way uh, basically just to allow access by a ladder for the battlements on top of the towers we're gonna place a ring of just ordinary stone bricks all the way around and then come up with stone brick stairs it might look a bit risky and slightly open but the thing is from a height I suppose this high you need to be able to lean over so it's nice to have a, a bit less uh, less of a guard and that's pretty much it for the exterior aside from a couple of details that we'll come back to later but for the moment let's take a look at furnishing some of the castle so right in the bottom floor I've filled out the floor with gravel and uh, tried to make it look kind of very dank and dark and mysterious over here we have an oubliette which is a kind of dungeon uh, it comes from the French word oublier which means to forget because basically you just throw someone in and then forget about them this is a good area for storage or I suppose miscellaneous places and um, like over here we have kind of a servants quarters type area just in this dank horrible little basement but there's plenty of room to play around with on the ground or first floor whatever you want to call it the one with the entrance we've got this kind of little social room so we've got a big kind of throne for the head honcho whoever that is and uh, then just a few small tables this could be for meetings or dinners or whatever not too shabby but not too fancy either you can see we've got a tapestry over here and those were actually quite common in castles so on the first floor we've got this kind of barracks and this really isn't a logical solution I just wanted to show you one of the uses that you can have for this if you're going purely historical what you'd likely have is some sort of guest bedroom or guest apartments basically somewhere where you could entertain other lords from other places um, because you know you gotta be known for your hospitality there's some guys with unfortunately placed beds right next to the toilet but you know rank and file top floor we've got the solar this is the uh, I suppose the private residence the study slash bedroom slash living area slash I suppose hosting room for the lord and lady um, you can see he's got you know quite nice furnishings big four poster bed over here there's a smaller bedroom which could be for a handmaiden or you know some sort of squire or apprentice or someone to help out so nice little study and it's got this big open ceiling to give a much more I suppose a bigger more spacious feel even though the dimensions are pretty much the same as the other floors so it's pretty nice it's got those nice big windows so up on the top level we basically got this parapet or walkway all the way around um, which is quite handy for defense you could actually build these towers one level higher if you wanted to using basically the exact same method but it's up to you there's quite a lot of good visibility around here and well the whole thing fits together quite nicely and one little detail I'd like to add is also that you can place these little half slabs and stairs all along the bottom and this gives the castle an appearance of not being quite so I suppose <laughs> jaunting it rounds off the bottom nicely and really finishes off the effect so that's pretty much it for now I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you've liked the different format I might have rushed over some stuff in certain points but I've been Mr. Outremc thanks very much for watching and I hope you stay tuned for more bye